Hey everybody, today we are reviewing a brand new dash cam. Now, I'm not sure if it's the very first, but it's definitely one of the very first dash cam systems that has three cameras. So today it's all about the Vantru N4. And we're gonna compare it actually with the N2 Pro that's beside it as well. All right, let's do a little unboxing just because the packaging is so impressive. It's quite Apple-like and they've stacked everything up so neatly into this very attractive looking box. So first thing you get is of course, you get a manual, a whole package of manuals, and then you get the camera. This is the main one. So it houses both the front camera and the in-cabin camera. Next is your power cable, which plugs into your 12 volt power supply. I like how Vantru has actually given you an extra USB in the actual plug itself. And they've done the same on some of their other products as well. And then you have your suction mount, which is also where your power cable plugs into. This is a USB-C by the way. Next is the rear camera with the extension cable that goes to the main camera. The rear camera does come with 3M double-sided tape attached to it, plus they give you an extra piece in case you kind of screw up. Some of you might be familiar with the N2 Pro. I did a review on that. If you haven't seen that one, check that out in the video section of Everyday Reviews. But if you compare the N2 Pro with the N4 side by side, there isn't a huge difference in size, but the one major difference is the size of the screen. So the N2 Pro has a one and a half inch screen where this N4 has a 2.45 inch screen. It makes a lot of difference. The N4 has five buttons on the top. They're very, very easy to use. The first one is your menu button. And also if you want to select a clip, you want to save a clip while you're driving, you just hit that one. Next one is the okay button when you're going through the menus. That also turns on or off your recording as well. Then you have your microphone button, which also acts as the left arrow button. Beside that is your right arrow button as well. You can toggle the view that you have on the screen for which one is the most predominant view. And then the one on the right side is your power on off as well as it controls your IR camera. If you wanna manually turn that on or off, you can do that with that button there. So the best way to test out a dash cam is to use it. That's why we are filming this now with the dash cam. I am using my own microphone at this point right now. I will be switching over to the microphone on the N4 just to let you have a listen to, but obviously a separate microphone does sound better. And for the review, I want you to hear everything nice and clear. So let's talk about the camera. It is a 1.4 aperture for the front camera compared to the N2 Pro that had a 1.8 aperture. So this should be better for low light. And the in-cabin camera is a infrared camera. We'll see that at night. And for the rear camera, it's a 1.8 uh, aperture, so f1.8. Now, one thing I wish that they could do is to make that a 1.4 as well. The reason being is a lot of vehicles, for instance, our Toyota Highlander has dark tinted windows for the back. So when you're mounting your camera on the inside of the window, it has to shoot through that dark glass. So that's almost like a filter that it's going through. So it has to increase the ISO, making uh, it not as clear or possibly more grainy. And that's really gonna be more evident when it gets darker out. So we'll give you a few shots of the rear camera when it gets dark as well. Here I wanna just give you a few shots of, it is kind of an overcast day, but the sun's coming in and out. And um, yeah, so far I, I really like the screen on this one. Let's give you a sample of what the N4 and the N2 Pro look like side by side and also give you a sample of what the microphones are like. So let's go to the audio of the dash cams right now. Okay, we are now going to show you a comparison between the N2 Pro which we've tested before and this brand new N4. They're side by side right now and we are using the ambient audio 
from both cameras. So let's just hear the N4 right now. I am talking right now. The brown fox jumped over the fence. Okay, let's go over, over the lazy fox or something. I don't know. Over the lazy dog. And now to the N2 Pro. The brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Do you hear the difference? That is the difference it would be now for video wise, we have them both set for outside, so the front camera and the in cabin camera. And since the N2 Pro does not have a rear camera, I'm just comparing these two right now, plus three video feeds on one screen uh, for you to watch is a little bit much. So I'll just add some uh, of the rear camera footage later on for you to have a look at. So uh, this is set for the N2 Pro at 1080p for the front and 1080p for the in cabin. Now the N4 works with 1440 for the front and 1080 for the actual in cabin. A little bit later when it gets darker we will have those infrared sensors turn on automatically. You can do it manually as well and we'll see what it looks like at night time. For quite a few years now, dash cams have become more and more important, especially for documenting any type of accidents or hit and runs, let's say. But now there seems to be even another reason. You know, it just seems with everything in the news that you're hearing nowadays, you know, perhaps maybe you want to document something that's going on outside of your driver's window. Let's say if you have an interaction with, uh, a disgruntled driver or maybe at law enforcement that's where the dash cam is really handy as well hello mrs officer hey, license plate and registration paper please <laughs> let's go <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, these dash cams that have in-cabin recording, they, they are almost a must if you are a, a, a taxi driver, Uber or Lyft driver, you definitely need one of them. They really are not very expensive for that little bit of peace of mind. So let's talk about hit and run. Let's say you've parked the car for the night and someone runs into you and they take off. Well, this is equipped with a G sensor and what happens is it will automatically start recording uh, when it detects that hit. Now, you do have to get a hard wire kit which does not come with the dash cam and that's an additional $15.99 if you want to use that parking feature. Now let's also talk about that G sensor. If you are just driving regularly, the dash cam is on, it's recording. What's going to happen if you get in an accident? Well, there are settings uh, for sensitivity how much you want uh, for your G sensor and you set that and if it detects that impact it'll automatically save that recording or save that event if you want to do it manually just hit that first OK button right there then it's going to be saved into the actual memory card now speaking of memory card you can use up to a 256 gigabyte memory card However, based on their website, they do not recommend that you use SanDisk or Transcend cards. They have their own cards or you want to probably try a different card. And of course, the higher quality you're going to go, the more memory you're going to use. And it all depends if you're going to use a single camera, dual or all three. So let's talk about the resolution. Max resolution is 2.7K if you're using just the front camera. If you use all the other cameras, you will get 1440p in the front and 1080p for the in-cabin and the rear. There are a couple features the N2 Pro does have that the N4 doesn't though. And that is on the N2 Pro, you can actually take a still shot. I can't seem to find it anywhere in the manual where you can take a still shot on this N4. And also the N2 Pro can also record in 1080 60 frames a second when this one can only record in 30 frames a second. So having those extra frames can make it a little bit easier to make out license plates for instance, but you do get more resolution with the N4 at 2.7K. Does that make any sense? A lot of numbers there. All right, it is nighttime right now, so out of the front you can see we do have street lights on here, but uh, off the screen it looks fairly bright, and now the infrared cameras are on 
have a look. You can actually turn them on manually or have it on auto. I just normally leave it on auto. And uh, I think it does a pretty good job. And once again, this is audio straight from the microphone off the camera. Some of you viewers have asked me, does this camera have uh, an app so you can download footage, let's say onto your smartphone? And the answer is no. And I really don't care because I have another dash cam in our other vehicle. It has an app and you can download footage to it, but I never do because you have to go and select your Wi-Fi from that network first. You got to open it up and go and start the uh, Wi-Fi on the camera and, and all that. And then you download it and it takes a long time to download these clips. For me, it's just easier just to take the card out or just take the whole dash cam off, bring it into the house and just put it onto my computer. You have a bigger screen. It's much, much faster. So yeah, it does not have that. And does this have GPS or GPS logger? There is software for a GPS logger and there is a GPS available. The GPS module does not come with the dash cam, but it's only 21 bucks. So it's not going to break the bank. But one thing I do wish that Vantrue would do is perhaps maybe offer a couple packages. Say you get the version that we have here and then I'll offer a premium package that would come with, let's say, the GPS module and come with a SD card, one that you know that works with the unit because the last thing people want to do is buy something that uses an SD card. Now you're going to say, hey, don't use any of these cards use this one, well, you know what, just include one and I'll pay for it. This way I just don't have to go hunting around for another card. One feature I'm a fan of on my N2 Pro that the N4 has as well, it's that the power cable connects directly to the suction base, not to the actual camera itself. So if you want to remove your camera, you don't have to mess up your wiring at all. Uh, let's say you're removing it to actually go take it inside to view some uh, footage, or maybe you're in a sketchy area, you want, might want to take it off and put it in the glove box uh, until you use it. All depends if you use that uh, parking feature or not. Also, I did notice though that the N2 Pro is a lot easier to take on and off uh, than the N4. The N4 does come off the base, but I think they, they use a different type of, of a connector with that. So it's a little bit stiffer. Maybe that might loosen up in time. Uh, it's not a big deal if you don't remove your camera a lot. I actually go and jump between other cars a lot. So I do take the camera with me and then I mount it in other cars. Speaking of wiring, I do wish that Vantry would include a trim tool. And that's a kind of like a, a little wedge tool to get wires and hide wires in and around the trim of the vehicle. And uh, some other manufacturers of dash cams include that. I just think it's really handy, especially when you have to do that rear camera, you have quite a bit of wire to actually hide. One thing that I like about the Vantry products over some other dash cams that I've used is how simple they are to use. They're very intuitive. The button system, the menu system, uh, if something happens, something, someone cuts you off or someone hits you and you wanna make sure you, you got that recording, uh, just a simple hit on that very, very first button, you get a huge red lock symbol across the screen. There's no doubt that that's the clip that you are recording or basically that you're saving in your events folder that will not get recorded over. So yeah, just really simple and intuitive. So if you're looking for a three camera dash, so if you're looking for a three camera dash cam system and you want something streamlined, easy to use with good quality, you definitely want to take a look at this Vantru N4. And make sure, check in the description. I'm going to check with the manufacturer to see if they'll supply me a code. And if there is one in that description, it might even save you some money. One big difference between this N4 and the N2 Pro though, is the N4 now uses a super capacitor instead of a battery. And the advantage of that is that you can use this in extremely low and high temperatures. Whereas if you use a battery based system, even though that battery is just there just to finish off or finalize clips, it's not there to use without being plugged in. But uh, if that battery gets too hot, the system will shut down. And that can happen in a lot of places where it's really hot and you have that dash cam just sitting baking in the sun. So if you live in a real hot or cold place, 
A super capacitor is the only way to go for a dash cam. So that's it for another Everyday Reviews. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoy making these videos and sharing them with you. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And if you already have, well, thank you. I really appreciate the support. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Meow. 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 Meow.